City of Stevens Point Airport Commission Meeting, recorded December 14, 2020. Well, it is noon. Um, yes, my name is Paul Adamski. I'm chairman of the Airport Commission. Um, we're going to uh, start promptly here. And um, I think we have a quorum of commission, do we not? I saw May and Anna, myself. Is ever, are the, all the other commissioners here, Joel? Um, I uh, let me take a look here through the, through the list. I'll get the screen up here. Carl's coming on right now. So that's four. I haven't seen Ray yet. Okay, well, she can join us when it works, assuming. Um, oh, no, no, May, May is on, Ray is not. Oh, okay, Ray, yeah. All right. Yep, so we have, um, we have four. So we are doing something that's um, a little out of the ordinary. Normally we have the water to each commission meeting first and then followed by the airport commission, but we reversed that order today in anticipation of accommodating as many um, of the other individuals from the public that uh, wish to speak. Um, I don't know how many uh, people that are not commissioners are on the uh, Zoom call. Do you do that um, calculation, Joel, or not? Yeah, we show 21 participants. Uh, there's a number of staff and then commissioners, though, so about about 10 or so, I'd say. Okay. So um, let's do the first agenda item, which is the roll call. And you've already identified who's here and we can add uh, Ray later, assuming uh, he, he is able to join us. Then we need uh, as a second agenda item, the approval of the no November 9th minutes. Are there any changes or uh, suggestions? So Mr. move, Nachman. Got a first from uh, May. Haynes, well second. All right. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Sign. Motion carried. Next um, agenda item is the department claims. Are there any questions about the airport commission claims? Not for me. If not, a motion is in order. Haynes will move approval of the balance. Ackerman will second. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carried. Um, the next agenda item is um, what would I do with my agenda? Oh, here. Um, the airport fence construction project. Um, there's going to be a, a brief presentation by Jason and Joel Lemke, and um, there might be other staff, staff involved as well. Then after their presentation, we'll allow uh, people uh, time to uh, reinforce their point. We have received a letter that's been emailed to all the commissioners that was dated November, December 14th. By the way, whoever wrote that letter um, or group of people who wrote it, they did a very good job. And uh, with that in mind, Joel, let's go forward. Real good. Um, I believe uh, Ray is joined by phone now. Uh, is that correct, Ray? Are you out there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, all right, real good. Well, what we're gonna do here is um, try to, I guess, boil down you know, quite a bit of history into a relatively brief expl explanation and then let the commissioners kind of ask questions about that and, and engage with your, um, the members of the public w when you feel fit here. Um, the letter I wrote really was designed for not only everybody out there, but for us too, to keep thoughts uh, kind of corralled into uh, an appropriate structure and, and brief enough that you know, we don't throw 30 pages of detail, but but long enough that we don't miss any of the high points. So I'm just going to go through some of that. First off, um, off to my right here, just off screen, um, 
to just facilitate our distancing. Jason Drawheim, the airport manager, is here with me so we can both be um, commenting on this. In the memo, I go into a little bit of history first, and and really, you know, one of some of the first correspondence about what it took to begin this process starts back in 2012. Uh, there surely is some before that, um, but everything before that is is definitely getting into a very kind of preliminary state. Um, so this goes back, you know, we're getting we're getting on a we're getting on a decade here. Um, the fence project as a whole is one of those things where, um, you know, really the, the basis for it becoming a, a, an item of high interest really did come out of a lot of the vulnerability assessments that municipal operations and sensitive operations had to do um, following the 9-11 timeframe, but there's also a ton of uh, relevance as it pertains to the control of uh, larger animals, deer and coyotes and anything that can be damaging to an aircraft as well as um, kind of non-compliant use of the airport in any regard. And so that's kind of what I went through in there. <clears throat> I did want to point out that very early in the process, um, we recognized the importance of the recreational opportunities out there. And I do have a map I can pull up uh, to get at this a little more, um, which is why we started uh, the concurrent use process and the, the swapping of some property out in the area. And for the sake of anybody who hasn't really had a chance to take a look, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through that really quick. So um, even though north isn't up here and that kind of gets to me, um, it's this direction, north is this direction, north south. Uh, this is East Maria right here, runs east-west. Um, and the property that you see here that has the two cross hashes on it um, was actually swapped um, between uh, the airport portion of the city operation and the utility portion of the operation for the lands that are uh, the single hash mark going this direction. So this would have been um, released by the airport for utility purposes, and this would have been released by the utility for airport purposes. This would have been released by the airport along with this little sliver of land that goes up into here and around back here. Now we did all of this in equal acreages because that's kind of how it was looked at, whoops, how it was looked at from the Bureau of Aeronautics, which is a, a part of the State Department of Transportation, um, for the sake of monetary equity. Um, there would have been a purchase involved and everything like that if, if it couldn't have been pretty close to equal acreages. But the bigger thing is that we went about this in order to preserve the recreation corridor that comes through here. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with it, um, this is a trailhead down here near where the Gate 4 uh, text is. This is a common trailhead for the Green Circle Trail and it comes out through here. And ultimately, there's a few spots where you can see it weaving through here along the river, back up in here, and it goes through here. And it continues on where my mouse is through this area and then up through and by the Isaac Walton League where they kind of are next to the driveway for a while. Currently, uh, the trail comes across the airport property here out like this to the crossing um, of 66 and the Isaac Walton League driveway comes this way across the airport property uh, to connect. Part of our release of all this was to facilitate the fact that, you know, we've had really long-standing, positive, valuable relationships with both the Green Circle Trail and the Isaac Walton League. And we didn't want the fact that, you know, this fence project, we didn't want that to uh, needlessly impact uh, either one of those in a way that was kind of irreplaceable, right? So we're working within the confines of the fence project to relocate not only the Ike's driveway out around the fence, um, but also the Green Circle Trail out around the fence. Uh, and we've met with both of those parties uh, to talk that through. Um, just for your reference here, the pink line is the property line. And in some areas you'll see fence denoted with uh, a little black axis. And in the area where you see green, that's uh, where the fence is not uh, super close to the property line, but rather a 15 foot offset. And we'll get into that a little more. Um, so back to my letter here. Uh, so we talk about the history, we talk about the green circle trail. Um, 
to, to that point, beyond the actual uh, labeled green circle trail, there's a lot of kind of <laughs> informal recreational trails back here that people hike on or bike on or anything like that. And they haven't proven to be any sort of issue. Um, but again, they're not, um, they're not official or anything like that, but they're enjoyed by a lot of people. This area is filled with them. This area is filled with them, that kind of thing. Um, let me get back here. So one of the things that I wanted to point out to you guys was just that transfer. The, the property up in, up in the area that is mostly, oops, mostly part of the conversation here today um, did used to be um, property that was owned by the city because of acquisition done by the water department, which I believe was more in the 60s. It was not only this, but other land in the area. Um, there was some, some, I guess, discussion about and, and maybe some uh, desire to not have traffic down Wellfield Road years in the, in years in the past, like several of you might remember. Um, and, and, you know, maybe it's not exactly a, a quote unquote compliant use, but we've always had um, good relationships with the people out there. And several of you have probably met me just saying, hey, since you're out here, if you ever see anything weird, let me know, you know, call the water department. So we've had a good relationship there. Um, and had there any been anything in the way of vandalism or anything, we would have had to shut that down. <clears throat> but one of the developments out here was that this fence would have probably been placed uh, on this side of Wellfield Road, um, which would have done really nobody any good because it would have been the short piece of the road available. We'd have had gated and fenced facilities here. And then all this would have been unavailable anyway. So we brought the fence to the other side of Wellfield Road because from a utility perspective, we also have an interest in getting our facilities inside uh, inside the fence for, for that purpose, for security purposes. Um, and as we go through here a little more, um, we talk about the land release. The land release is kind of accommodate, uh, accompanied with a concurrent use agreement, which gives us the ability in future years to use areas that are in here through a corridor because everything inside this pink line now is uh, technically federally obligated airport land. It's already back in 16, I think it was transferred. Um, so there's a corridor in here where we can do uh, some construction if needed of utility facilities because this is our main uh, water producing part of the city for, for drinking water purposes. Um, Yeah, so then I go through timeline a little bit just to spell out kind of where we've been. And I, and I trust you've had an opportunity to go through that. The state release of land document came in in 16. The federal one took all the way till 18. And again, all that started in 2012. So that was a six year process in and of itself. Um, all the conditions were met for those land releases to happen. So they did, they were recorded appropriately. Um, the design of the fence, you know, that's kind of where we're at is at that final design phase um, at the tail end of the environmental process and all of that. Um, that's where we land. The comments, <clears throat> the comment uh, letter, the letter that went out kind of indicating to the 45 adjacent properties that what's going on inside of what um, Omni had, which is the design consultant involved as the comment period, we did get the one, but obviously there's been several since then that we're handling outside that comment period. Um, and Omni did note that in the environmental document. So here's the, here's the timeline. Um, the date that was represented in the public notice for the comment period was August 17th. And we got a letter from the town of Hall. We had uh, some communication with Mr. Man Savage and then later on with also him and, um, and some other neighbors. Um, I'm sorry, my screen keeps jumping around a little bit here. Uh, email correspondence with Dave Wills who's actually on the call today also. Happened in November, we had an on-site meeting with uh, Joan Amanda Zagzebski, um, and then uh, a letter from Kurt and Todd uh, that accompanied the petition. The only thing that isn't noted on here is the email that I forwarded off to the commissioners this morning um, that wasn't in hand in time for the agenda. And then just a note that this surely omits quite a bit of detail and I apologize for that, but it's a big project. It's been ongoing for quite some time. 
Um, and I, I figured that whatever gaps need filling, we can certainly do that. So, um, you know, when we get to the recommendation here, this is a, a staff recommendation. Um, and what it really comes down to, if you, if you boil all this language down to something that is actually just say a sentence or so, is to say that we understand the fact that from a preference perspective, um, the residents along here who currently um, look across the road at a woods would prefer not to look across the road at a fence. We, we understand that. Um, we also understand that, you know, the, the grant assurances that we sign um, in order to stay eligible for our entitlement dollars talk about, you know, responsible use of property and things like that too. So in order to be consistent, what we're proposing, again, to boil it all down, is that in these areas where the green line is, here and on the other end of the airport that we that we do a 15 foot offset of that fence, which should over time provide provide space to allow for some screening, whether intentional or, or just natural, you know, wild uh, to hide that fence uh, for the most part. So I guess with that, I'll, I'll give it back to the commission and just say any questions you have above and beyond that. Is there anything you'd like us to uh, cover more in depth? Commissioners, any questions? Okay. Um, Joel, this is this is Ray. Um, uh, how far back from that fence are, or from the property line, are we required to have that fence? Um, are we able to move it closer to the 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 runways, for instance? Uh, is is there a minimum distance that we're required to have, or is the discretion? entirely up to the city? Um, that is a pretty deep question, I, I guess I'd say. Oh no, now my mice, mouse isn't working the way I want it to. Um, it's kind of kind of both and kind of neither. Um, we do have stricter limitations up here. You see some of these lines represented up here. We get into what's called the object free zone. And Jason will be better at explaining some of that than I will. Um, <laughs> So, you know, being that we're already putting a fence there as part of this project, um, they wouldn't want it moving any closer up here. Um, I think we've gotten general agreement from, you know, kind of in concept from the people that we need to work with on this, that 15 feet is appropriate. But there also is the fact that, you know, when you start putting land outside your fence in a great, in a, in a, in a, in a large sense, like, you know, 100 feet, 200 feet, something like that, or this whole parcel or something, that really, you know, what's the purpose? Is it is it land that you plan on doing something else with? And if not, why? Um, so it gets into the appropriate use and management of the land that we talk about um, when we when we talk about grant assurances. So, yeah, you know, I don't know if that answered your question, Ray, but it's it's kind of a yes and kind of a no. We are we are trying to give a little bit on that um, to say let's provide enough space for screening but not put so much um, property outside our fence that it, that it isn't essentially a land release that we don't have authorization for, you know? Can I? I right, I, right. I, I, go ahead. I apologize. This is Amanda Zagzebski. Um, Joel. I, hey, Amanda. And I'm sorry, <laughs> I should explain to everybody maybe a little ahead of time. Um, I can see when the hands are raised and everything. I think okay. what's most appropriate is for the commission to get through some conversation and then they're going to hand it off to um, public um, input and comment. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners? Uh, this is Anna. I just have a question about the 15 feet. So you, you decided on 15 feet, but how did you decide on that amount? Like why not 20 or 10? <laughs> Fair question. There's nothing really scientific about that. If you have a preference over 10 or 20, I don't object to that either way. I don't think Jason would either. Um, it's just in, in the area through here, <clears throat> you know, we do have an area that's kind of scrubby outside the right of way that doesn't have a lot of you know, planted trees, you know, this gets into some pines that were planted. The stuff that's closer to is just some kind of wild oaks and stuff like that. Um, I don't think that that dimension is, is 
super relevant. Um, so I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a, a solid reason behind the 15. It's just that it doesn't get to be excessive, right? When we start getting, you know, beyond 15, 20 feet, we start getting into the area where we're going to be plowing through much more established woods. And we're getting to the point then where we're actually having to do maintenance on both sides of the fence in a way different than we'd have to do otherwise, you know? There's also the, the interest of equitability uh, through the other surrounding landowners around the airport. Um, in some other areas, there's, it's a little bit closer to sensitive instrument approach areas where we can't get much closer. So 15 feet works in those other areas and uh, would lend itself to be an equitable, equitable distance. For those who you don't recognize the name or that voice, that was Jason, the airport manager. Joel, um, before we open it up to persons wishing to address the commission, um, can you show us uh, what your understanding from conversations you've had with people who have signed the petition or contacted you is the recommendation uh, from this group versus what uh, the department is recommending? Well, it's it's varied a little. The, the first and kind of official comment we got was just about a little bit of relief up here. Uh, that was from, from Mr. Mansavage. And that was part of the reason that we pushed this back at all was to say, we, we understand. Let's move it back enough to say, if we work on the other side of the fence and perhaps with the town of Hall, if they're willing to let something happen in the right of way, um, which I imagine they are because it's town hall residents that are that are mostly concerned here um, to do some plantings or something. I think we could participate in that. Um, but I think it is this location of this green line and how far off of the road it goes. And and that that also applies up here. Um, uh, Joan, Amanda are, are here. Um, and the other residents are down here. And so this is the area up here where it gets trickier to move closer because we get into some of that conflict. Um, down here, we get more into the woods, which gets to being you know, a bit more costly on the project and gets property outside the fence that we don't necessarily want outside the fence. Um, so I think that the proposal is really to move this line north, this green line to be parallel to this, just a little further north, um, which even though it's it's not really clear is represented here already to some degree. This is, this is the 15 foot off of right away location. Okay. Any well, other questions from commissioners or comments? Yeah, this, yes. This is Carl. Um, okay. oh, yeah. On the original where you were, had the, the complete zoom out, uh, was there some green, uh, fencing along Highway 66 as well that is being moved and the, or is the area of concern all along East Maria Drive? Nope, it's along 66 as well. Um, the folks over here that have property that faces on 66 and it's actually proposed all the way from where, uh, this is where you get real close to the runway when you're on 66 just past what um, is very commonly still referred to as the Noel Hanger here. The green line starts right here and then it goes behind all these properties along 66 and this is where our property line is common right their their rear property line is our property line um and comes all the way through here and, and then ends at this location right here does the uh concern also apply to along that fence line uh, a suggestion of 100 feet back or only only along East Maria Drive. Well, the the concern that's been uh, given to us is is represented here today. There's none. There's none from the owners over here. Um, plus, to be frank, we don't have an ability to be more flexible here. You can see this taxiway right here is is pretty close to this green line. And again, any change we're going to make as it pertains to how close we are to property lines. Um, it's not only a, a staff desire, but also one of those that uh, would come from the Bureau to be equitable about it. So, um, you know, if we're moving for one reason somewhere, we should move for that same reason um, in other areas that have a similar conflict, which is why we propose 15 feet everywhere. Or not, not everywhere, it's in the whole perimeter, but everywhere where there's a, 
I guess what you could say a residential conflict of sorts. Mm -hmm. I would think uh, I would think that that 15 feet, would, uh, particularly along this, uh, what I'm seeing here, along Highway 66, would give a uh, uh, an ability to maintain without getting onto private property. Right. That's yep. Right. One Any other thing. questions from the commission? If, if I may, may I add one more thing, Carl. This is Jason. Um, if Joel, if you would uh, scroll down to the runway three zero threshold. Oh yeah. When Joel mentioned earlier the swaps and uh, that that happened between the city proper and the airport, the approach area that you see off of runway three zero. That was our RPZ or runway protection zone that we had secured through that property. In swapping or essentially releasing that property within the swap, the airport made a major concession to facilitate that runway 3012 is at its ultimate build out and will no longer has the ability to expand or lengthen that runway due to the, our losing that runway protection area. And we made that concession in the interest of recreation and the contiguous uh, use of the Green Circle Trail. Um, so I just wanted to, to bring that to everyone's attention that there was uh, there was more than just a good thought. There's also some sac some major sacrifices by the airport that were made. This is this is Ray again. I've got one more one more quick question on the on the area along East Maria. Um, is there any any thought that we'd have a a problem with big animals um, entering the airport property if we've moved that um, that fence closer to the the airport runway and cleared area uh, than the 15 feet that's suggested? Well, obviously with the fence up along the whole perimeter, I mean, nothing's going to get in more easily by moving that fence one way or the other, it's gonna, it's gonna keep everything out because it is a contiguous fence all around the airfield. So okay. I, I don't think that sh that changes the conflict, but I will say that okay. um, for the airport purposes, um, it is the, you know, that is a, a relevant concern is the, the animals um, in conflict right. with aircraft. Right, and I, and I know that. Um, is, is it time to make a, make a comment on on the fence location, or is uh, is that not appropriate yet, Mr. Chairman? Um, not not a motion at this time, but uh, a comment as a as a commissioner is certainly, or a question is certainly acceptable. Okay, um, um, a, a comment. I I would like to see the the uh, the area that is allowed to have uh, vegetation. Um, Further north of uh, of East Maria, so. Um, how, how many how many feet, Ray? Um, I I would actually like to like to double the fifteen feet for vegetation. I think okay, that we'll that would that be uh, reasonable. Yeah. The rest of our commissioners can keep that in mind as we're listening to um, people Correct. wishing to address the commission. All right. Okay. Thank you. Any other staff or commissioner questions or comments? All right, then we'll go on to the part where we um, are allowing people to speak to the commission. First of all, I wanna make note in the minutes that this is not a public hearing as is oftentimes uh, done at committee meetings and, and, and council meetings uh, throughout the year. Uh, we want to hear from people who want to talk but as is oftentimes the case when there's a controversial public opinion on matters at the council, especially, we want to limit all of you who wish to speak to a maximum of five minutes. So um, Joel will repeat how he will recognize uh, individuals who want to speak by having you raise your hand or whatever he's going to say. Um, and then once you are recognized, please give us your name and address for the record. Yeah, real good. And it looks like the only person that we have on by phone today is uh, Commissioner Schmidt. So we shouldn't have any um, muting, unmuting issues. So I would say, uh, Paul, if you think it's appropriate that 
if you guys have a ability to kind of make your make yourself known, I have two screens full of people. I can kind of call off who I see um, and go from there, or you can unmute yourself. And if it happens kind of in a way that we're not talking over each other too much, that'll that'll be fine. So if somebody wants to go first, that's great. This is Nancy Hustle. I live on uh, East Maria Drive. And if it's okay with you guys, I I was um, I would be speaking on behalf of the Town of Hull and Stevens Point residents who regularly walk and bike along East Marina Drive. Um, we appreciate that uh, this project has been years in the making and complicated. Um, our request today is restricted to the placement of the fence only along East Maria Drive. Um, while we understand you know, and appreciate that it's been, um, the, that the placement of the fence of, of back 15 feet has been recommended. We don't feel that 15 feet is, allows enough room for appropriately sized vegetation to mask the size and scope of the fence. Um, we know that there will need to be a buffer between the fence and the vegetation, and then also between the power lines and the vegetation. So that leaves not too much room for the sizable, um, these two buffers would just leave little room for the amount and size of the vegetation required to minimize the fence's visual impact. Um, we also want to note that, that we're looking only at East Maria Drive because it is across the street from our properties. We are not able to landscape it ourselves um, like some of the other property owners where it's in the back. It's not our property. We may not landscape it. And if we landscape our own property to mass the fence, that doesn't help all the people who walk and bike and use East Maria Drive to get, well, for their daily activity, everybody, there's a lot of people who walk that loop every day, sometimes multiple times a day. So that's kind of why we're asking for it to be moved back. Um, I am representing 120 plus community members who signed the petition. Um, the original number that we requested of a few hundred feet was intentionally vague in an effort to open a conversation and to show our willingness to discuss and compromise. I hope you'll take our request um, presented on behalf of your friends and neighbors in the town of Hull and the city and see the point into consideration today. Um, we look forward to engaging with you on this and we thank you very much for your time and consideration today. Thank you for being brief, I appreciate it. Who's next? I think I understood the young lady, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your last name, but uh, I, I think her request was 120, 120 feet, is that correct? Well, there's 120 people, but yeah, we would like, uh, we, you know, we're looking at more like 100 feet back is what we're looking okay. for. Okay, thank you. Who wants to speak next? Hi, my name is Jill Clay Smith. Can you hear me? Just a little bit louder, please. I will try. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, thank you. Um, so my name is Jill Clay Smith. I am also a resident on East Maria Drive um, and represented in the petition. Um, I just have a question, actually. In some of the previous discussion, we were talking about um, the established woods and maintaining a perimeter so that you know you had it as usable land. Um, anything I've heard so far, there hasn't been any plans for that wooded area. Um, can you hear me okay? Sorry, I heard. Yes. Okay. Uh, everything I've heard so far, there hasn't been any plans in motion for that wooded area. Um, so I'm wondering if there are plans that we need to consider um, and, and why do we need to keep that area as usable land for the airport if there aren't plans for it in the future? If you'd, if you'd like, we can uh, field that question. Um, you know, I would say that the only thing we can really commit to right now is that there aren't immediate plans. Um, I will note that this line right here, this is the object free line, right? The, the, also the uh, building setback line, right? Joel, um, the map's oh, we can't see anything. The map's not up, Joel. I'm sorry, uh, let me, let me get back to that. Uh, all right, I got to 
put you guys back to this and then go here. Can you see it now? Yep. Okay. This uh, dashed line here is, is the object-free zone, which means that, you know, basically in the, in the sense of an airfield, nothing, nothing goes in here that's, that's like a building or anything like that. Um, we do have on uh, part of our um, documents that get filed every like five years or so, a grass strip runway um, development that involves going between these two runways like this. And that could develop into what other kind of things can go along with that. Um, it's not inconceivable for us to be able to put uh, hangers over here, anywhere outside this line, or even just something uh, to facilitate uh, that which goes along with kind of the planes that use grass strips a little more. Um, so all I can say is that we don't have an immediate plan. It doesn't mean it's not usable or that there wouldn't be plans. And, and with, the, with the cost of this fence, you know, um, that would be another expense incurred if we moved it really, really far off the right-of-way line. We'd have to incur another cost to relocate it in the future in order to place it back where, where the property line is. So that's really the only comment I have on that is that it, it isn't an immediate plan. So in follow up to my question, I guess part of our concern might be if we only move this back 15 feet or 30 feet, you know, potentially in the future, this wooded area may need more coverage if there aren't any trees there um, to kind of preserve the view if that's what we're looking for. So that- Well, that the property is, the property that um, the utilities in the airport commonly have is, is pretty actively managed. This whole area hasn't been um, cut in a while, um, but it's not gonna go, um, you know, just forever into the future without having some forest management on it. So um, I don't have any expectation that property that's really visible from your homes here is gonna be like clear cut or anything like that, but there will be some active forest management in here as it's appropriate with the program to either do thinning or or whatever, whatever's appropriate through the plan. But, but you know, a little more um, impact could be made up on this end if need be when the grass strip goes in, but that's not visible from the road here. Jason? Yes. This is Amanda Zagzebski. I am at 4429 East Maria Drive. Now with right your pointer, I'm seeing, yes, with your pointer, I'm seeing that you're saying that right now there's nothing in the plans of being built. However, in the future, you just stated that a hangar could be put directly across the street from my sensory disorder child who has autism, his uh, bedroom window, less than 50 feet. So when you're pointing to that area, can you use your pointer and point to that area right there? You're saying that nothing right now is in the works, but I'm looking at the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics project funding report. It's a five-year plan. And I'm curious about uh, about Super Club Drive, the new hangar that you're looking at developing in 2021, and also the snow removal building that you plan on putting up. And from what I, now you can correct me if I'm wrong, from what I'm seeing is that the discretionary funds that are going to be received will be going towards this hangar for uh, super light planes. And so I'm asking you about your, tell me about your five-year plan. Amanda, real quick, um, and I apologize. It was me, Joel, that was talking about that. And Jason oh. can certainly get into more detail on that. Um, but something like a hangar for a small plane isn't something that the city or the airport operation would pay for. Um, that'd be something that a private owner would pay for. And again, there is no immediate plans. There isn't even any real midterm plans because nobody's shown interest out there. And we don't yet have the grass strip runway in to really trigger somebody's interest in that. But as you can, I'm sure appreciate is that a facility like this is one where the five-year plan that you have is a very, very short timeline to look for something that is a perpetual asset to the city, right? This, this isn't going away. So the five-year is like right now um, in the eyes of, you know, capital planning. 
what I'm saying is, and you're exactly right, there's nothing on there that refers to anything over here. And, and that's my point that you're reiterating is that we don't have any immediate plans over here. Um, but things in the future could develop that makes legitimate use of airport property um, warranted. So go ahead. Do you have anything more on that? I guess I'd just like to stress that th there is no near-term plans for the area due to the fact that one of the areas you referenced, Super Cub Drive, uh, is an access road along our already existing hangar area that was just uh, just had some work done to it. So we've got a great deal of space on this end of the air airport that Joel scrolled to um, that it, we're more we're concentrating more on for development and, and future expansion. So it would be a very, I guess, niche uh, type of a hangar development that would take place across the airfield. And to be honest with you, like Joel said, there isn't, hasn't been some immediate, any immediate interest and our priorities are placed elsewhere at this time. So I, I really don't foresee um, any rapid action taking place in that area. Really the... Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I'm waiting for a turn to speak. I, I'll... Okay, uh, you go first. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, thank you. Uh, I'm Karen Sig. My address is 125 Virginia Circle. And um, I am a signature on the, the petition. And one thing I'd like to emphasize is that uh, this petition, um, from my perspective, I am very close to this area. I'm um, just up kind of up the hill. And, and that's another thing that this is a, a lower elevation. I don't know if it really matters to this, but it does in a sense when you're looking at this, that the across on the, on the north side of East Maria Drive, that's a lower elevation um, compared to the um, further west part where the, um, I'm looking at the map now, <laughs> um, where the edge of the forest is. Well, anyway, my main thing is that if this were just six people, quote unquote, complaining about a fence coming in, I, I don't believe they would have gotten or we would have gotten as many signatures as we did. And the idea that this is really probably used as much by, if not more by, City of Stevens Point residents coming across the bridge and walking in this neighborhood. Um, it is just a very, again, maybe because the nature of the, the roads and the beauty of this area is highly used as um, uh, Nancy uh, Ms. Uh, noted earlier. Uh, so it's, again, it's highly used by Stevens Point residents and it's not just you know, a few Town of Hull residents. Um, things that I'd like to also share is that, you know, as I drive around Stevens Point, I'm aware of the city making concessions for certain trees in the area uh, regarding, let's say, sidewalks and understanding that how important trees are um, for the, the beauty and the um, aesthetics of our, our city and area. Um, the ones, for example, on um, the corner of like Jordan and uh, St. Paul, and there's one on Prentice, just to south of South Maria, you know, where the sidewalk has gone around, no, granted, individual trees. But the city has also been a tree city for um, over 35 years. And again, I think the point of this is, you know, this group, we're really just looking for a, a buffer that's of some significance, but not, you know, does not have to be, as uh, also was alluded, you know, the couple hundred feet is, is let's say, negotiable, but it, the 15 feet is, is far too few to really have any kind of impact um, or beneficial, you know, uh, effect. So I'm just, again, in support of moving it back to a point where there um, is truly a, a, the buffer of vegetation and um, aesthetics to benefit all that use this road. And um, that, again, something that is a little further than just 15 feet. And uh, so that, thank you for listening. Any other comments from people wishing Nancy, to address the commission? Nancy, yeah, Nancy, can I jump in? This is Kurt, um, Kurt Mansavage. I'm over on East Maria Drive as well. Um, and um, first of all, just again, want to thank everybody, um, Joel, Jason, the commission for taking some time and letting us um, have some input on this. We greatly appreciate it. And and again, I think, um, you, you know, our, our concern is um, 
none of us want to look out our windows or walk out in our yards in our front yards and feel like we've been put in a prison or are being protected from a prison or something it's a you know that fence is pretty intimidating and if we can if we can push it back you know um to a point using the existing vegetation that's in place and i did we did include on some of the attachments that were emailed um to everybody this morning just some some pictorial references that'll show you you know if it, if it went back 15 feet um you're really not the existing vegetation that's there um, doesn't do a thing for it really. If you go back a hundred feet even, all that mature line of oak woods and there's some very beautiful mature uh, white pines and even you might even get, get into some of the red pines at that point, you'd have a nice swath of existing mature vegetation that could be left and um, nobody would even see the fence as they walk these roads or the folks that live in this area. And um, I, I would add to um, that Again, you know, green space is a commodity. They just don't make any more of that, folks. It's just, you, you can't build it. Um, it. It's something that if it's there, we, we as a community, we embrace it, we cherish it. And if there are in fact no plans for that large section of, of um, you know, wooded land, a lot of people come out there, walk their dogs through it, utilize it and enjoy it. Um, if that's something that could be worked out with the city, you know, um, on a long-term plan or something to to maybe push that fence back deeper into that so it can still be you know utilized and enjoyed by by many in the community I think that's something that we should also consider um so again thank you thank you for listening to us and um taking things in so there were uh three hands raised out there Dave Joe and Amanda if one of you want to go that'd be great I think Okay, Joel, uh, I have one other question about how much time has been spent looking at fencing alternatives. Um, I've been looking at different municipalities that have been putting up fences and a lot of them are going with black colored fences and I think green, but black seems to be a much, a much better for aesthetics as well as uh, some uh, possibly electric fences. Have you looked into the color have like is this is something who can make that decision with what color the fence is going to be ultimately when it does go up well with with everything that's taken place you know in eight to ten years you know there's definitely been evaluation of fence styles um we are using a little bit different fence when we get real near the buildings right correct um on the airport the stuff that's kind of going cross country, so to speak, um, is a little different. That has to do probably as much with economy as anything else. Um, color is one of those things where I think we can take away from this a little bit of direction to say that, you know, it's it's something that we want to review at the at the final hour, and at a minimum, maybe get an alternate bid for a certain section of fence that would be colored black or green or something like that. Um, but it hasn't been evaluated from from a, a real serious uh, perspective yet because we're, we're just at that point right now. Um, for example, you know, if in the areas where the fence is invisible, there, there's no there's no reason to consider a, a change in color. And I can understand out your front window, you're going to see it as much as anybody that that would be a desire that you'd have for us to look into that. So I, I get that. And we can we can make some considerations there if it's the if it's the charge of the commission to do so. Any other people wishing to speak to the commission? This this is Dave Wills. Can you hear me? Yes, Dave. Yes. Um, nineteen oh nine Mary's Drive in the town of Hull. I'm also um, on the town board. And have been working with, uh, it's been my pleasure to work with the citizens of East Maria Drive. A couple of comments, and then I'll, I'll just, you know, kind of move to the side. Uh, Joel, first of all, I really appreciated the write-up. Uh, it gave some real clarity, perspective, and I appreciate the complexity of this whole project. I also want to compliment the citizens of East Maria Drive and, and the entire community, for, for that matter, and how they're handling this in a very thoughtful approach and very professional approach. Uh, this is how we resolve issues. And uh, I'm most appreciative for how they're, they're moving forward. 
I, I guess I had thought a little bit about color. Uh, I do, we obviously want, want to um, advocate for our citizens over there. And I just want to put it out to, to, to Joel and the, and the city that if there's any, any discussion the town of Hull uh, from a municipality needs to have with the city on this to help facilitate the necessary changes, we're here to support our citizens. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah, this is Tom Husband. I don't know if the five minutes count toward my wife and me separately, but I'll be brief. I, I just, I want to appreciate uh, everybody here publicly. Uh, uh, Joel, uh, Jason, uh, the commission, um, and, and I, I, I think this is so far good governance and, and good community and, and good neighbors. Um, I just thought I would add, um, I get, um, and Joel and Jason raised the equity issue. If you go more than 15, you have to do it all around. And, and I get from a project point of view, I yield on that. I, I put it into the chat and I'll say it here publicly that I think the East Maria section is distinct insofar as, as if we were property owners that actually abutted the airport property. Again, we wouldn't be doing cartwheels, but we can say, you know what, we'll plant arborvitas on the back edge of our property and make them grow fast and that'll be that. We don't have as residents the right to landscape the right of way. So, and, and again, all, all due respect to the type of fences we're talking about here, it will be easily be mistaken for a prison fence as opposed to an airport fence. And I, and I think, you know, visually, it, it, it will be shocking to have that. I think the solution is in a compromise here, whether we end up at 50 feet, 75 feet, I think all of the residents here would, would invite Joel particularly to come walk with us as a group. And, and, and up there you can see, I'm just tossing it out, you can see across from Joe's Egg's place that existing vegetation at the top left of the screen that's showing goes in about 90 feet. That goes in about 90 feet. If you were to draw a line down there, exactly parallel to East Maria, all the way down to the well road, you'd be done. And in fact, there's an existing logging road that runs close by that, that's about, um, I think it's in a little bit further than that, and, and, um, and Joel would know that. But I, I, I get the additional costs, but I, I'm, I'm confident that, that with some of the federal funds that, that we can be accommodated. So I yield and thanks everybody. And this is Jill Cleve Smith again. I just wanna add on to Todd's comments. Um, you know, as I'm sure you know, we've been very close to this for at least a month or two. And so this is not like new information for myself in particular. Um, but just over the weekend, looking more at this a little bit closer and looking at some of the descriptions of like the FAA when they talk about security and why we need fences, you know, some of the language that stuck out to me um, was just, you know, these are meant to be physical and psychological deterrents, you know, and these are meant to, you know, the pictures that they show that we attached with the guy next to it and it's 10 foot high. I mean, just looking at that really hit me hard over the weekend, looking at that going, wow, you know, that was, that was a big, after months of looking at this, just over the weekend looking at that was like, wow, that's a big deal. So thank you for listening to us and thank you for bringing us to the table. Any other comments from members of wishing to address the commission? Um, I'll jump in. Can I, can I jump in? So can you hear me? Yes, please, your name and your address. Hi, um, my name is Courtney Chaffin. I live at 4930 Barbara's Lane. It's the property that's right on the corner of Barbara's Lane and East Maria Drive. Um, the front of my property does not face the wooded um, area in question on East Maria Drive, but my backyard, my entire backyard, um, I live right next to uh, Kurt and Maria, my entire backyard faces uh, that beautiful woodland. Um, I just, you know, I signed the petition, but I just wanted to, um, you know, voice my opinion officially um, so that, you, you know, you can add it to everyone else's that, you know, I also would really like to see this fence moved back, um, you know, if it could be moved back 100 feet so that 
you know, the fence could be shielded from the view of the property owners as well as the community. We have a lot of small children in this community. I myself have an eight year old and our children love to bike around the neighborhood. Um, they like to bike on the Green Circle Trail near our house. And I, I, you know, what Jill just said moved me that it creates a very different impression for our children. You know, if they're biking a along a road that has a prison like fence with barbed wire that they can visually see versus biking along a road that's filled with beautiful oak and pine trees and you know, nature. I mean, it, it's truly beautiful no matter the season. Um, and so thank you for, um, you know, taking our requests into consideration. I really appreciate the open communication that you all have had with us. Thank you. Any other uh, residents wishing to speak? Oh, this yeah. is Greg. Hi, Greg Aiken, 5195 East Maria Drive. Um, my thought that that area, that whole crosshatched, crosshatched area to the north of East Maria, that area is highly used by hikers, bikers, and uh, the Wellfield Road is used a lot by dog walkers, by people who want to get out on a road and walk and, and not have to worry about traffic. Um, it's, so it's, a, it's, it's a very, I, 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 I can't imagine any less than 100 people a day are out on, on that road using it because it is a, an area that is, that, is, um, that is just easily accessible and it's something that that you can use without having to worry about uh, traffic. And uh, I, I understand there's a need for security. My, my preference would like would be to have the fence line go all the way around the wooded area, understood that it needs to carve out the areas necessary for runways and all that. Yeah. No. So they've got more lately than me. That's, okay. that's, that's my thought on it, that, that it, would, it would really, that the community would be better served if we just bordered the property that needed to be protected from a <laughs> airport flight standpoint and not, not worry about the land that's outside of that. Border the property that we need to worry about the airport flight. Amanda, stand. you're outside. not muted. Oh, sorry. That's all I have. Okay, right. Kurt Mansavage, I have one more thing to add to and I and again, I'll, I'll make it quick, but just the 120 petitions that we do have signed, um, Th those were just people that we, you know, connected with briefly around this um, general area. I think um, nobody really had an awareness of what was going on. Nobody um, embraced or thought this was, um, you know, a, a, a positive thing, although it's required. We got it. We need to secure and protect the plains and that property from, from wildlife. But I think the community at large, if they knew more about this, um, there'd be a lot more interest and a lot more input. Um, on this topic as well. So just throwing that out there that the sampling you, you've seen, you know, the small sample you've seen of interest in this is really just um, brief, a brief, you know, tip of the iceberg, I think of what the community at large might feel about this topic. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, by my calculation, we've been um, discussing this for very close to an hour and I appreciate all of your Last comments. So I think at this point in time, I'd ask you all to put your um, Zoom meeting on mute, and uh, I'd ask for any. Um, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm not used to. Okay. Any comments or questions from uh, the, the commissioners? Yes, commissioners. Put on mute and. Commissioners, any Paul, questions? Um, this is this is Joel. If I could just jump in on there uh, once, there's there's one kind of relatively difficult item to just kind of throw out there, and that is that the the use of that wooded area has been brought up quite a bit, and I totally understand that. Um, several of the people on this call have met me out there themselves because I walk it myself quite a bit. I'm I'm a neighbor too. I live west of the interstate, but not far on Marion Avenue. And um, but the fact of the matter is is that that use of the crosshatched area actually uh, was was changed in 2018 when the final federal decision came down. Um, all property right 
um, changes in the city have to go through the plan commission and it did in 2018. So that cross hatched area, recreational use of that area is technically non-compliant right now. Um, and it's been one of those things where um, it's been that way for a long time when it became non-compliant use of that area is when we transferred it between utility and airport in 2018. And that was seen by the plan commission. Um, there hasn't been a huge effort to crack down too hard on that because of the fact that we knew that a fence project was in the future and that obviously is going to take care of that. So I think the one issue really at hand here is the vis visual impact of that fence, um, to be honest with you, because one way or another, um, we're kind of held accountable for the use of the property and, and the, the, the broader use of that property really in, in a lot of ways is, is something that we need to address anyway. All right. Well, um, any other commissioners have any comments or is, want to ask some this questions? This is Ray. I just have one more question. This is Ray. That that area that's cross hatched. My initial impression was that that was going to be clear cut, and now from the discussion, I it seems to me that it's not going to be cut, uh, or or is it? No, there's just enough to, the, the only path that's going to be cut is to facilitate the installation of the fence, um, right. other than yeah. in years ahead where we're doing forest management. Okay. So yeah. the the area that we're, we're really talking about, um, it will still have the same, essentially the same visual impact yes. with with trees as it has now. There will just be a fence in between. Right. Okay. How wide would you Thanks. anticipate the the area that the fence would be? Um, how many feet between each side of the fence, Joel? Thirty feet swath, I believe. Yeah, Jason and I were just talking. It's not detailed on a plan yet, but we got to assume that you know probably not more than a total run of thirty feet, um, which would put you know about fifteen feet either side of the fence. So if we offset it off the right of way 15 feet, that's where the fence would be, and we'd have room for maintenance on both sides. Over the long run, that's probably not, that's probably a little more than is necessary. And I can't say that the plan is 30, uh, but I can say it probably no reason for it to be more than that in the beginning. Any other questions from commissioners? This is Carl. This is, the observation is that, you know, the these fences do do age and the vegetation you don't want vegetation growing in and amongst the the fence line because you're going to have to get in there and maintain it uh, to uh, uh, have the fence serve any uh, you know continued purpose so let's just be clear that most or many of the trees that are between the street and the fence, uh, especially the ones closer to the street, will not be cut down, correct? Right, yeah, um, especially, and, and that's one of the other items that I think is important to talk about with landscaping. That's Town Hall right away, and maybe Dave cares to comment on that. Maybe they're willing to say, hey, we can do some things in the right away because it's not city right away through that stretch until you get up on top of the hill by by Zags up there, and, and we're, we're willing to work inside the right away with some screening that'll um, be impactful, but that that's right. So I was just talking here, we've got a lot of other fencing related to the utility operation. And really, if we're gonna maintain that in a way that's effective, that's about right, 15 feet on a side of a fence because it gives you the ability to get um, a little piece of equipment in there. And we do a lot of fence repair because anytime you have wooded property around fence, you're doing pretty routine fixes on it because limbs and trees fall and uh, it's it's pretty labor intensive. So Joel, you're talking about then a 30 foot swath with the fence down the middle. Right. Yeah, okay. You know, I this is a, a, a tough one. I will say I totally understand where the property owners are coming from. Um, but we also, our responsibility is to make sure that we're doing things legally for the airport in terms of the FAA. And we're thinking about the long-term fiscal responsibility that we also have. So we can't be just moving the fence uh, if we do need to use the property in question, um, that wooded area. 
So I can see moving it to maybe, I don't know, 30 feet and leaving that a 15 foot buffer of landscaping. And I think it would be great if the town of Hull could also work on that <laughs> right of way area to also add if there's additional landscaping to be added. Uh, so that's what my comments are. Me? I guess I would echo the same, you know, Anna's same thoughts, Eve, 30, 50 feet. Um, I, I think I would like to go out and walk some of that line just to make sure that I have a good understanding of what the impact is for the residents. Um, because I live right down in the city of Stevens Point and I don't get out that way that, you know, that often. But I, I also can understand the, you know, effects on the their property and having that fence with barbed wire with the kids, um, you know, r riding past there and then walking past there all the time. That certainly is a concern. So um, I have certainly taken their comments and, um, and value what they brought um, to the commission. So am I, I'm not trying to put any words in anybody's mouth, but you know, we basically have uh, three options that I could think of right now. We can accept the staff recommendation of 15 feet. We can um, come up with a different alternative, which both Ray and Anna have suggested might be 30, or maybe at least in my opinion, the third option would be to, I don't know if I'm gonna get the vernacular correct, but to table this for this meeting um, put it back on the agenda after the commissioners have more time to go out there and walk around either as a group or individually. Um, I'm pretty familiar with the area because I walk over there a lot. In fact, I was just in that area last week, Thursday. So that's not necessary from my perspective, but, um, that would also give the commissioners time to talk with Joel and Jason about other questions they might have after they, uh, Walk, walk it through. Um, is there a problem with a 30 day delay, Joel and Jason? Um, I, I don't think it creates a construction problem or anything like that. We've been at this for a long time. Um, I just wonder though, you know, discretionary funding. Yeah, it's kind of like reading the IRS tax code, We're working with the Department of the State, you know. Um, if there's if there's general support for the difference between 15 and 30 that doesn't get so far that i'm concerned about them interpreting interpreting our action as irresponsible in the way of our in the way of our discretionary or not discretionary but our entitlements um i think that's probably something that and and, and granted we'll we'll confirm this and i can always bring it up to uh council uh, a week from today if it's an issue but if that's something that everybody can kind of get around where it's an in between it's a compromise like i think we're all looking for i just want to say that from a staff perspective we can we can get on board with that because uh the reality is that to go much further is going to take us down a a really really long arduous road of discussion with our regulators um and i'm not I think we're towing that line with 30 feet, to be honest with you, but I'll, I'll tow it on behalf of the whole group here, if that's your wishes. And I, I think that one thing that adds to our case with our regulators is that it's bordering a neighboring town right away and not city to city. So I think that there could be allowances justified in that respect. Yeah, a little more leeway. But either, <laughs> way, either way, Paul, you're, 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 good. you're good with any of those actions, yeah. And this, so this is Anna. Um, just one more comment. I mean, we talked about being equitable between this amount, this, the size of this buffer in terms of where to put the fence line. I don't think it's necessary to change the 15 feet along the 66. I agree that it's in their backyard and they're probably already have lots of buffer, um, landscape buffer themselves there. So I think this is the East Maria that we're truly concerned with. And Paul, I would support the tabling if um, we think that's necessary. Well, if you, um, 
before you make a motion to table, which is undisputable, uh, we have to do it if somebody, if a member of the commission makes that motion. Um, do we want to talk more about what Joel's comments now? And I, I think everybody agrees with what you just said. We're, we're not talking about Highway 66. We're just talking about that green area that's been up on the screen on the map the whole time we've been talking. Uh, if I'm mistaken about that, I, I should be corrected. That's the staff perspective also, Paul, is that we, we really can't move much up there. And it was it was our direct or our thought that we needed to propose something that stated that equity. But in a, in a case like this where there's a unique circumstance, I think the commission has that that right and that authority to say this is different over here. Here's what we want to do. So I think we're I think we're going in the right direction here. So if I if I understood what you said prior to that, that staff thinks they could accommodate a 30 foot, I assume that you would work with some of the neighbors uh, about the color of the fence. I think a green fence would be a lot less uh, prison like than the, the standard one that you see surrounding the entire airport in Appleton. Um, I would imagine that's going to be a little bit more expensive, but I would imagine we can find the funds somewhere to, to make that uh, change. Um, is there a way, Joel, for you to determine or ask that the people who are still on the call who had spoke to this issue from the general public, can they raise their hand if they could agree to that compromise and would that make them happy? Or maybe not happy, but agree to it being a fair compromise? Well, I've seen some head shaking, so I'd say that you could ask them to speak up to, to see if um, see if everybody's okay with that. Can you restate exactly what you're offering? Well, Please, from my perspective, it. I'm sorry. I just want, I didn't hear her. I'd ask her to repeat what she said. Uh, I oh, just wanted to had, be restated. Restate back. Yeah, so, there's a lot of numbers, so can you, there's a lot of numbers thrown around, so we just want to know if you can kind of restate what you're asking us to, to comment on or to yes or no to. So that the, rec the recommendation by staff, if I understood it correctly, is that instead of putting the fence at the 15 foot from uh, the lot line, that would go to 30 foot from the lot line and somehow or another we would get a colored fence, probably uh, green. I don't know what other color, black maybe. Um, and, and that staff could work out um, that detail at 30 feet versus 15 feet. Right, then, and that's that's how I'd state it too. Is that we're we're looking at we're looking at how can can we even do this? That's another. I'll tell you what. What what we'd go under the assumption is that we're we're probably fine through here at the 30 feet parallel to the right of way, 30 feet offset for the center line of the fence. And assuming there is some flexibility up here, we'll carry that right through. Um, the one exception being that, you know, this object free zone that I talked about, they, they might not be willing to move there, which means that at a point almost to the corner, we might need to bring it back. Uh, but if we can't, if we can't, obviously it just makes sense to run it straight ahead. So what I'm saying is that if that's the general agreement of everybody, I'd say we take, take some action on it and get going in that direction so we can take that action and move forward and that I can rather than that I have that direction and Jason and I can work toward it. And if there's any issues with that from a regulatory perspective, then we bring those back and re-agenda it. Um, but if we're gonna table it, then I need some direction on what we're tabling for because we'd need to do a little more research. But but really, you know, honestly, when I think about it, if, if everybody's accepting of the 30 feet, I think that's a, a I think that's about as far as from a from an operational perspective, we're willing to ask. So beyond that, it's going to be more of a um, more of a battle and more of a a hard justification to say why we're doing it. To be honest. Hi, Joel. This is Amanda Zag again. I realize I'm now unmuted. Um, I want to address. You said in front of our house, it would we have the problem with the object free zone. Yeah. Yes. Okay, where where is the, where's the problem with the object free zone? Please point out where exactly with this fence being pushed is there a problem with the object free zone? Right, right there. Here. So that's so. 
that's just past your main view headed out anyway. So right. I don't think it's that big a deal. So we, we get just past your main concern. So all things considered, I would say that we'd try for a 30 foot offset on that entire parallel line, except for if they tell us we can't in that area up there. But if they tell us we can't, it's gonna be starting right here toward the interstate. And that's not very impactful to anybody. Okay, Joel, um, this is, well, it being a solid fence and fences are pretty solid. Um, I'd like to table the conversation until you know that we can have that 30 feet uh, as a as an, as solid as this fence is going to be. I don't think it's necessary to table if if every if most of the citizens are uh, okay with the 30 feet. Joel has stated twice now that he thinks he can make that happen, and that if he finds out from the regulators that he cannot, then he would bring it back and put it on the agenda sometime in 2021. I think considering we've been at this an hour and 15 minutes, if we can come to that consensus, it's the best decision um, for everybody's time and uh, future. I think as a commissioner, I would, I would support that. Um, I would observe that uh, a black fence would disappear quicker than a green fence. I would agree. Yeah, I agree with that my, myself. Yeah, this was is, that a motion to um, to change staff's recommendation from 15 feet to 30 feet with the portion of the fence that we all have been described and seen on the screen being black? Is that I a motion, Ray, Carl? I think I, I think Ray was going to make a comment. If I no, I I was just going to say that I concur with what with the 30 foot. Well, I'll uh, make that but, motion of 30 and feet can I, black fence. Can I jump in and, and maybe offer that black if possible? Because again, uh, we'll work towards that because I like where this is going. But if it's not supported by those groups that pay for 90 to 95% of this, we're going to have little recourse other than paying for the entire thing. And I can always bring that back. But I, I would say that it, it might make sense to say, you know, to support the color if it's part of an acceptable design process. Anna, did I hear you make a motion? Yes, or yes I made a motion and that's fine with whatever Joel said. I can't repeat it because, yeah. Is there a second? I will second that. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carried. Good job. I think it's a great compromise. So. <clears throat> All right, on to the rest of the agenda. Uh, Jason's written verbal verbal and written report. Jason? In the uh, interest of brevity, um, we've had a great month and we're ready for the snow to fly. Um, it's, we're thankful that it's been holding off. So I'll, uh, I'll keep my comments to that for this month. Very good. A motion to adjourn is in order. Move to adjourn. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Both same sign, don't go away. We've got the water commission to do it now. Videos of these meetings are available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.